Hey, my dudes. It's like some kind of weird deja vu. <laughs> I feel like I've done this before. <laughs> okay, anyways, <laughs> I digress. <laughs> remember the other night? Remember the other night, Saturday night, when I was recording with me and Oliver when I was babysitting? And I had him say hi to you guys. And he was like, hey, my dudes. I think he said it twice, something like that. He gets that from his mama. When we were living together, she would used to, like, there's some mornings she would be like, hey, mom, you should call in today. You should call in today. And I, my boss at the time, his name was Byron. And so she'd be like, call and say, Byron, my dude, I can't come in today. I never did call in and say, Byron, my dude, I can't come in today. <laughs> I can't even imagine what he would have said. He would have been like, Candace, we need to talk. <laughs> you know, I tried for like, I tried for like six years to, to, to get him not to call me Candace. For six years, I tried to get him to not call me Candace. And then out of the blue, it just like, I don't know what happened. He just started calling me Candy. And um, I remember the day it happened. I mean, it was just such an awkward sound coming out of it. And you could tell that he was struggling saying it and that, you know, it was awkward to him too. And I wanted to be like, no, just don't do, just go ahead, call me Candace. It's all good. You know, there's like three people that I let call me Candace and I would have added him as a fourth just because it's it seems so painful for him to say candy and not Candace <laughs> yeah but those yeah those three people that call me Candace are my mom my dad and my ex-husband Steve and uh you know and the reason I don't like it is because that's what I was called when I was in trouble Candace Lorraine and so when I hear Candace I feel like a certain amount of like, you know, oh my God, I'm in trouble. I'm guilty conscious or something. I don't know. And I, I don't know. I think Steve does it just because he knows I don't like it. I should call him Steven. Steven. Steven Joseph. Hey, Steven Joseph. No, no. He's, he, he, doesn't, he, he doesn't seem like a Steven to me. I don't know. You know, and I feel like there's a certain amount of, like, when you use somebody's name in a proper way like that, I feel like there's a certain amount of intimacy that is included into the usage of that name when you're using it like that. And, um, you know, I used, I used Stephen when we were married, like, if I was irritated with him or if I was being stern, I'd be like, Stephen. But, you know, I'm just like, that intimacy is not there anymore, so it just doesn't feel right. So then why does he get to call me Candace? I should be like, you can't call me Candace anymore. No more. No more Candace. Steve cannot call me Candace. No more. It has to be Candy. Call me Candy or call me nothing at all. Tyler tried to call me Candace one time. I'm like, uh-uh. Uh-uh. Sure not. Sure not, mister. No moss that. <sighs> so, anyways... This is a recreation of a video that I did last night, December 17th, 2020, which, which YouTube took down because of a song that I had playing that I whined about in the video before this, or which would actually be after this. But um, anyways, in that video, I talked about like how on the 16th, I, or maybe it was, I don't remember what day it was, but I spent the day, I didn't feel good. I had like a lot of stomach issues um, and um, how I just kind of laid in bed and, and um, just kind of rested and took care of myself and, um, and then I went to sleep around 8.30, and um, I woke up about, well, it was 3.26 exactly. And um, when I woke up, um, 
you know, again, my mind was going a thousand miles a minute and I, and also that day I was just like surrounded. I just was in so much fear. Um, the day that I was just like laying in bed and not feeling good. I, there was just so much fear that, that I was dealing with. And, um, so I woke up at three twenty six, and, um, you know, I have been waking up and I didn't last night. I didn't do that last night, but anyways, I've been waking up about three and usually it's like three thirty three that I wake up on the dot. And I told Kayla, I was like, you know, I keep waking up at this time. And supposedly that's the witching hour. And I was like, do you think it's something evil? And she's like, mom, you know what? And she's like, she invited me to see it as something that was, you know, maybe is my higher self, you know, waking me up so that we could have some quiet one-on-one -on -one time together. And, um, so since that, since, you know, she, she invited me to look at it that way, I've been, um, you know, every, every time it happens, I meditate, I just meditate. And so I meditated, I didn't do the whole open, open, open meditation, but I, I, I did my own meditation and I incorporated the whole open, open, the whole open, open, open into my meditation. And, you know, I, I'm my, my, my housemate, you know, she was like, I was telling her about the whole open, open the whole open open no meditation and it's how it's like a powerful self-forgiveness meditation and she's like candy what do you have to forgive yourself for and i'm like well i did this and i did that and i did this and she's like well it sounds to me like you you know what you you have a difficult time forgiving yourself for things that are not that big a deal and you know if She's like, I don't feel like you have anything to forgive yourself for. You're not a horrible person. You're very kind. You have a good heart. She's like, I think instead of, you know, doing a, a, a self-forgiveness meditation, you should do like a self-reflection meditation. And so I was like, okay, well, maybe you're right. And so that's kind of what I did. As I, you know, I did like a, a self, I don't know. It was just really awesome meditation. And again, I didn't incorporate the ho open no the ho open no open no into my meditation and I think it was I think it was very beneficial and you know I woke up yesterday morning and I felt way better way better I did a tarot reading on contacting my spirit guides or seeing who my spirit guides were and I don't think that you know and it was really cool I did you know, because the first card, the first card is who is your spirit guide. And of course the tarot isn't going to tell you exactly who your spirit guide is. It's not going to be like, oh, well, your spirit guide is this person. It's not going to do that. It's not going to narrow it down to one individual. It's just going to kind of give you like an idea, like an aspect of what your spirit guide could be. And so, but it was weird because it was the three of cups, which is something I've been getting a lot of lately. And so I feel like what that was saying to me was that it was that my spirit guide is my spirit guides are possibly three people. They're feminine in nature, not people, but three individuals, three entities. They're feminine in nature. They're um, very loving. They're very creative. And I feel like there was like, a, I don't know, like, this whole muse energy, like they're like, like they're coming to me in the capacity of a muse. So that was kind of cool. And it was just a really lovely, it was a really lovely reading. I liked it a lot. It was such a, it was, it, I don't know. It was very touching and it, um, I don't know. It just kind of was like, you know, a great way to start the day. I mean, as opposed to today's readings, which I talked about in my last video. Anyway, so um, it was it was an awesome reading, and you know, yesterday was a good day. I had a really good day, and then yeah, I went to the gym and I worked on my butt, my legs, and I tanned, and um, came home and did my video that YouTube took down. That was fun as hell, but this is going to be just as fun. But like I said, you know, that day, um, it was Tuesday, Tuesday, it was Wednesday, Wednesday. I was just like in this place, this, this place, I was just like very fearful and very, uh, I don't know. I can't even explain it, but I just felt, 
afraid of everything. And all I wanted to do was lay there in bed. And I had like that pain in the middle of my gut and it was like stabbing and I'm not even gonna, you know, from that book, Letting Go, I'm learning that when we, when we label certain aspects of ourself, it allows us to become attached to those aspects. And so by labeling this, this ailment that I suffer from, I'm attaching myself to it and it's becoming a part of me. I'm manifesting that into my, into my world and to, to remove it, to let that go. You have to surrender yourself to the symptoms. So, you know, whatever pain, whatever, like physical, whatever physical manifestations you feel from that ailment, you have to surrender yourself to that. And, and that means like completely immersing yourself in these symptoms, but not giving it no longer assigning it a label. So I'm not going to even say what that ailment is or was, because I feel like, you know, yesterday I still felt pretty gross, but I didn't like say it was because of this ailment. I, I simply allowed myself to feel the grossness of the symptoms, the pain, the whatever, and then um, I let it go. And so I feel like, you know, that that book, Letting Go by Dr. David Hawkins, it's amazing. It's, it's, I feel like it's a life-changing book. It teaches you so many things that I feel like we should have been taught from the time we were able to understand the whole learning process. Because I feel like, had we been taught that, because it's something that I think we innately know, but through programming, through different belief systems we're taught, through different labels that we're given, through different labels we give ourselves, through the belief systems we adopt, we kind of like suffocate it. We handicap it. We, we handicap that innate ability to let things go. And, you know, Buddha was right. All suffering stems from attachment to desire to attachment to anything and you know this book it goes it goes through like it goes through like the stages of grief it goes through like relationships it goes through like addictions it goes through sexuality it goes through illnesses it goes through every every aspect of our life food um, allergies anything that the human body is, is forced to deal with, it goes through. And it, it's like a tool by which to move beyond that and let that shit go. And I feel like if we were taught that, things would be so much better. So I think, you know, if you have an opportunity to look at the book, you know, it's like there's four books. It's letting go part one, two, three, and four. And it, I mean, there's so much information that he covers that, I mean, it, the fact that he was able to fit that all into four books is miraculous in my opinion. And that's another thing that he talks about is opinions and being attached to opinions. And when you say, well, that's my opinion, then you're attached to it. If you say, well, here's an opinion, you're not saying it's my opinion. You're saying it's an opinion. It, this is an opinion. You know, take it or leave it. And and it, you're not as liable to be attached to that. So, you know, it's, it's a cool book. So it's called Letting Go, <sighs> The Art of Surrendering, I think. And it's by Dr. David Hopkins, Hawkins. Dr. David Hawkins. Amazing, beautiful book. This man, I mean, I feel like what a gift he gave us. And I mean, it's life changing. It's, it's a life changing book. So I think y'all should check it out. But anyways, I was like on Wednesday, I was surrounding myself. I mean, I was just in the state of fear. And, um, so when I, when I got up yesterday morning and, you know, after meditating and whatever, I, I was just like, you know what? You can't do that anymore. I'm just not going to do that anymore. And so I did my tarot reading. It's getting ready to go out the door. And also what I've doing, what I've been doing is, um, 
So for Christmas last year, Katie gave me this little, I love Rumi. Rumi is one of my favorite po 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 poets, poets. I cannot say that. Rumi is one of my favorite poets, Rumi. And it's like just the pocket Rumi. And so what I do, what I've been doing the last several mornings is I'll just open up to like just one of the poems. And then I, it, there's no rhyme or reason. It's just whatever, whatever one, um, it opens up to. And it's kind of difficult because it's a tight book, but yesterday it opened up to, let's see if I can find it. It's called the embryo. found it. Okay. And you know, the, the first part of the poem, it doesn't have a lot. I mean, there's, it's a lovely poem. It's a beautiful poem, but it doesn't have anything to do with my state of mind on Wednesday or, or, or how the poem actually helped me yesterday. Um, but so anyways, it's called the embryo. When the time comes for the embryo to receive the spirit of life. And I was like, at first I'm like, what does this have to do with my life right now? I can't have an embryo. There's no way I could even like grow an embryo right now. So what? So anyways, just wait. Okay. When the time comes for the embryo to receive the spirit of life, at that time, the sun begins to help. This embryo is brought into movement for the sun quickens it with spirit. From the other stars, this embryo received only an impression until the sun shone upon it. How did it become connected with the shining sun in the womb? By ways hidden from our senses. The way, by, the way whereby gold is nourished. The way a common stone becomes a garnet. And the ruby red. The way fruit is ripened. And here's the part that is just like really like reached out to me and touched me and is like, wow. And the way courage comes to one distraught with fear. I just thought that was lovely because I was one who was distraught with fear and courage came to me. And, you know, after I did my tarot reading, I, you know, I dealt with some things that I was fearful about and I, I handled those things courageously. And, and then I read this and I'm like, you know, I was distraught with fear and courage came to me the way Courage comes to one distraught with fear. So I thought that was lovely and I, I liked it a lot. Um, so I hope that you guys are, if, if anybody out there is distraught with fear, I hope that courage comes to you. To, yeah, to anyone who is be feeling fearful. I mean, I think that fear is... A wonderful thing when it helps us recognize how courageous we are and how the ability to move forward in that fear like the vibrations that that emits are amazing the vibrations of courage are an amazing it's a very high frequency and so you know I was like oh wow the way courage comes to one distraught with fear courage came to me when I was distraught with fear and it prodded me to do things that I was, uh, I was fearful of. And I did it. And I don't know. We'll see what happens. But, you know, this is the recreation of last night's video. I don't know if it's nearly as awesome as last night's video. But, you know, what are you going to do? Nothing. You're just going to do what you can and move forward. And I'm going to end this now. And you guys have a great day. And don't forget to live abundantly.